On a cold December day in Paris, France, two young men changed the course of moving pictures. At Le Grand Café in the center of Paris, the Lumiere brothers created the first movie theater. They had not only led the way by enhancing the camera of the time, but they had successfully developed a method to project a moving picture onto a large screen. The dawn of cinema had begun, and the Lumiere brothers were leading the way for the legacy yet to come. And the reports of the time where people were just fainting. I mean, there's this, when the train is coming in, people supposedly had, were getting up and running out of the room there thinking that this train was really coming at them. Just caught up in that experience and, and seeing these images um, on the screen. And it was something just never seen before. Of course. Moving pictures had become a fascination in Europe in the early 1890s. The biggest innovation at the time was Thomas Edison's kinetoscope, which only one person could view at a time. The limitation of films like these gave rise to the demand for a machine which would project the pictures onto a screen so they could be seen by a whole room full of people. But projection of films onto a larger screen proved to be difficult. Images were often blurry and the projector produced too much noise. These moving pictures and animations were seen as short, crude forms of pastime entertainment, not expected to last. Little material survives. The actual material artifact of, of films was disposable. Even Thomas Edison thought it was but a passing medium, that there was no need of keeping film because it was a, a temporary uh, thing. But the Lumiere brothers, being innovators, inventors, and leaders, had a different idea in mind. Their goal was to produce a practical machine with which to develop a new and advanced cinematic technology. It was the beginning of 1895, if I remember correctly. As I passed by the Rue de la République in Lyon, I noticed a shop in which a crowd had gathered to admire the Edison kinetoscope. I joined the queue and charmed by the timed animated images that these machines produced. I thought to myself that if one could project such images on a screen so that they could be seen by an entire gathering, the impact would be turning. And so I decided to study the problem. You know, I, we overuse the word awesome, uh, but uh, and I don't think there's anything that to us is awesome anymore because awesome means almost godlike. And but when people saw projected images, that was awesome to them because that was a whole new thing. Auguste and Louis Lumiere set out to develop a camera that was transportable. Up until this point, the cameras weighed hundreds of pounds. They were far from practical. Cameras such as Edison's Kinotograph had many defects. They were heavy, immobile, and battery-powered. The Lumiere brothers were leaders in the field and sought to successfully eliminate these problems. You know how we play the game charades? And when you want to indicate that you're going to give a, the title of a movie, the gesture that you do, right? That came from the Lumiere brothers. That was their machine. That was the cinematograph. It's called a tournoval. It's the hand crank. And that was how they operated. That's what helped make their, their machine, their camera, portable. And it didn't need, you know, electricity or it didn't need any other power source than just cranking, <laughs> cranking the, cr the wheel there, the tournoval, the handle. Um, With the help of their scientific and photographic background, the brothers perfected their first motion picture camera in March of 1985. The camera was small, light, and cheap. The Lumieres played a leading role in establishing the motion picture scene in Europe and across the scene in the United States. In the first four months of 1896, they had opened cinematograph theaters in London, Brussels, Belgium, and New York. They astonished viewers wherever they projected their films and left a lasting legacy. I did a show here at the Ainsworth Opera House one time and uh, a man came up afterwards and he said, I saw that movie that you showed. And I showed, you know, 20 movies. And he said, I saw that one. And I said, well, I didn't want to tell him he was wrong, but I knew he was because, you know, I had the only copy. And I said, well, I don't really think you've seen that movie. He says, you're right, I never have seen it, but I knew that movie. He said, my father saw it as a child. It so impressed him that he talked about that movie in such detail for the rest of his life that when that movie was shown, it was like I was seeing a repeat. You know, there was nothing, I don't think, in our lives that would be that, you know, make that big of an impression on us. We're so used to big things like that. 
The Lumiere camera was created at a time when telling stories through motion pictures was uncommon. The Lumiere films led the way for developing different genres, such as comedy, romance, action, and documentary. Particularly one that sticks out the most is comedy, and there's the one very famous view that the Lumiere brothers made called, um, I think it's called The Gardener Sprinkled. It's the La Rosa Arrosé in French. I forget how it's translated into English. But it's, it's the view where there's a gardener who's watering his fl the flowers, and this little mischievous boy comes in and comes right to the middle of the shot and steps on the hose to cut the water off. And the gardener is spraying, and then the water trickles down, and he can't figure out, and he's looking like this, and the boy takes his foot off the, the uh, hose, and then the water bursts in his face, and everybody laughs. And and you know, that, that comic moment there, you know, that timing of this water in the face, that sort of slapstick kind of humor, right, um, is still, you know, is, is just timeless and it still reaches us today. The Lumieres employed camera operators to travel around the world to show motion pictures and also to film foreign locations. The Lumieres were the first documentarians. They were innovators. They were leaders. Their foreign documentaries brought the world to everyday people. Well, and to, to come and show a film about Niagara Falls, well, who in their wildest dreams would ever get to Niagara Falls or Egypt or whatever? You know, we're so used to that now. You know, you can go online and look at any country in the world that you want to, but not in 1895. Early cinema was a truly international cinema. I think that's really unique about it. You know, there were um, early and silent films emerging all over and there was a sense of like just a movement of distributing it um, internationally and because it was silent and there were no you know there was no language barriers in fact you could you know it was an international language in, in very many ways. Through the work of the brothers cameramen became artists they could frame the field to create a purposeful representation of the message. And he was really one of the first bringing that um, photographic eye to the staging and the positioning, um, the framing, the composition, the lines, what's become known today as the um, Lumiere diagonal, um, either action occurring on that, act, that diagonal axis or the way that people would be arranged or um, objects would be arranged would be creating sort of these diagonal compositional lines. Um, it's something that is still uh, talked about today. The Lumieres also led the way for narration development in decades to come. But that notion of narration, of taking the everyday sort of content of life, the realism, and trying to document that and project that. Um, so, you know, we think about that impact um, and definitely in terms of um, they were the first to sort of create documentaries. For him, the Lumiere tradition was the actuality, everyday life, put the camera up, capture realism in action. The cinematograph and the work of the Lumieres inspired many others, including Georges Millet. George had seen the Lumieres camera in action and he followed in their footsteps. Originally a stage magician, he used his skills on film to create special effects impressing his audiences. But the Lumiere brothers were unassuming leaders. In film, they too began to believe that eventually film was only entertainment. They were scientists, not entertainers. They parted way with film and devoted their time to the manufacture and sale of their inventions. But through the Lumiere brothers' innovation and creativity, a new trail was blazed. The brothers and their workers created over 2,000 films, and each of those films inspired viewers who watched them. The brothers left a legacy for one of the biggest industries today. Predecessors in the motion picture industry, like Edison and his kinetoscope, thought inside the box. The Lumiere brothers took film to a new level and broke open the box. They created innovations and inspired filmmakers to come. Their ideas projected a range of technology, methods, techniques, and legacies that were imaginatively powerful. By expanding a simple idea, the brothers gave life to a flourishing industry. The Lumiere started turning the film reel, and it's still in motion today. Mm -hmm.